well, 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 if you're here and you're watching this video right now, you're probably looking for a web browser that's not going to track you, show you ads, and sell your data to the highest bidder. Well, if that's the case, I've got three awesome web browsers to share with you today that will get you off of Google Chrome and onto something better. So let's hash it out. Ladies and gentlemen, it's no secret that Google Chrome, the uncontested juggernaut of the web browsing space, has been absolutely crushing the competition in terms of user base globally for a very long time. However, all of that domination has come at a cost. People who use Google Chrome for the convenience, for the user experience, because it's a great browser, and it is, have also sacrificed their privacy. They've sacrificed, at times, their security and they've sacrificed a lot of the benefits that other browsers offer in comparison to Google Chrome. So the very first browser that I wanna share with you today is one that if you follow my channel for any length of time, you'd know I'm a huge fan of, and that's Brave Browser. Brave Browser offers the aesthetic and user experience of Google Chrome without all the ads, trackers, and extra stuff that we don't like about Google products. Brave Browser is tailor-made to protect your privacy, to allow you to take control of your browsing experience. And while it's still a relatively new browser, it has a ton of features that a lot of other browsers do not have. First and foremost, Brave Browser offers a built-in Tor browsing plugin, which allows you to open your very own private Tor browsing window, which allows you to browse the internet with a little bit more privacy. And Brave Browser also has a custom ad blocking engine that is super fast and buttery smooth that will make your internet browsing experience much better. However, I think the key feature that differentiates Brave Browser from the rest is that it offers the entire basic attention token ecosystem. In a sense, it means that you can choose to watch advertisements on your Brave Browser that are targeted to you anonymously so you're not sacrificing your personal information to earn a cryptocurrency token called Basic Attention Token. In turn, you can then use that token to pave your favorite content creators online or in the future to withdraw all of that and earn money yourself by watching online advertisements. However, instead of Google taking all the revenue, you get to take the revenue and you get to use it how you want. If you wanna go ahead and try a Brave Browser, I've left a link down in the description below. I highly recommend you give it a try and see if it's for you. Now, moving on to number two, which is actually my backup web browser. I have this installed on all of my machines, and that is Opera. Opera is a web browser that's been around for a long time, and it's gone through several iterations over the years, and it's truly a fantastic browser. For a long time, it was a web browser that I used almost exclusively on mobile, but now I've started to use it on my desktops as well as a backup to Brave Browser. Opera has a fantastic user interface and user experience. They have a collection of cool little tools and features like a built-in notepad and a bunch of little other widgets that you can use while you're browsing the web. But the thing that really sets Opera apart is that the user experience and the user interface is second to none in my opinion. You can customize all sorts of things. You can do all sorts of cool stuff on the UI to make the browser really your own. And for people like me who spends their full-time job pretty much exclusively doing things related to cryptocurrency and blockchain, Opera really has a special place in my heart because they offer a built-in cryptocurrency wallet application that lets you interact with decentralized applications on the Ethereum blockchain natively inside the browser. Opera has always been a very future-friendly and forward-looking browser, and it really shows in this feature. They're really looking to integrate what they call Web 3.0, or what the world calls Web 3.0, and that's blockchain, the move towards peer-to-peer, -to -peer, maybe decentralized file storage. They're really thinking about that and integrating it in the browser, and that's why right now I use Opera quite a bit, especially when I'm developing applications, because I wanna make sure it works there because I think a lot of people are gonna be using Opera in the future. However, one of my favorite features on Opera is the awesome connectivity between multiple devices if you have Opera on two computers or two computers and a mobile device. Syncing across devices is amazing and that's called Opera Flow. It's super smooth as flow would probably denote and they've done their best to make it as secure and private as possible by adding encryption into the mix. So again, you can find a link to download Opera down in the description below. I highly recommend you give it a chance, even as your secondary browser, if you wanna try it out and see if it's for you, definitely give it a try. And finally, my third and final pick today for an alternative to Google Chrome is Vivaldi. 
Vivaldi is another browser that is super, super fantastic in terms of its comparison to Google Chrome. It has a great user experience, great user interface, and it's very similar to Chrome in its overall aesthetic. However, it's extremely lightweight and very, very, very nice to your battery life on your devices. Vivaldi is definitely sitting in the underdog position in this browsing market today because I think it has such great features and such a great offering in such a really lightweight, sleek package that a lot of people just seem to miss it. Vivaldi even is credited with being the inspiration from a user experience perspective and user interface perspective for the newest version of Opera that brought, in my opinion, the best changes to the user experience that I've ever seen. Vivaldi really has nailed down the core tenets of browsing. While they don't offer native ad blocking or some of the other creature features that you get with Brave and Opera, it has the basics down pat. And if you want a minimalist browser that does all the things you want it to do and does them well, then Vivaldi is a great option. If you're a person who likes to use a web browser every day but doesn't need a bunch of extra stuff, Vivaldi is the place that you should be and you can find a link in the description down below for that browser. Definitely recommend you give it a shot. Now I do want to just address the elephant in the room because before someone says, hey Hishoshi, you're pretty stupid because all these browsers use the Chromium architecture, which is designed by Google. So you're just stupid and you're wrong and this isn't better than Chrome. Well, it's not actually quite the case. You're very right that a lot of browsers are now using the Chromium architecture, which is the open source sort of framework that Google Chrome is built off of, which actually uses the Blink rendering protocols. It's also designed by Google. So it gives you that normal Google Chrome look and feel that where a lot of us are really used to. And the main reason why Google Chrome is so popular is because of that UX and UI. Now, just because all these browsers do use the Chromium architecture does not mean that they are Google Chrome. Now these are not the same things. So I hear the argument a lot like, well, any Chromium browser is just garbage because it's exactly the same as Chrome. That's actually not the case. Almost everyone in the Chromium community that uses Chromium as their base architecture, including Brave, including Opera, including Vivaldi, have all spoken out against Google's recent moves to introduce their new web request format that's breaking ad blocker extensions left and right. They're all saying, we're not gonna integrate this new feature into our browser. If we have to, we're gonna build something else and we're gonna fix it and we're not gonna ship it to our users. So Google does not control the Chromium architecture once it enters the arena with the people that are building these new browsers. So keep that in mind, don't stress out too much. If you see something is made with Chromium, it generally means that the company that's building a new browser is doing the smart thing and they're taking what's really good about Google Chrome and they're taking that and then they're building their own features on top of it and removing the stuff that isn't so good about Google Chrome. So guys, again, check the links out in the description down below. I personally use Brave as my daily driver browser. That's what I do most of my stuff on. And then I also use Opera on some of my work computers, etc. And I think Vivaldi is a fantastic option if you're a minimalist web browser that wants to have something that just works and works really well. So let me know down in the comments below what you think of the browsers that I was showing today and if you have any other Chrome alternatives that you really, really like. And of course, do not forget to like this video and hit that subscribe button so we can hang out anytime that I post new content. That's every week, by the way. Thank you guys very much for watching. Cheers.